So in the last video, we used a 555 timer here to build this little clock circuit. And so we have our pulsing clock output on pin three of the 555 timer, and we can control the speed using this uh, potentiometer. And so that's great, but there might be times when we wanna manually control the clock. And we wanna be able to just push a button each time we want the clock to advance one, one or we want our, our computer to advance one clock tick. And so you, you might think, well, that's pretty easy. We just hook a button up. And so we have, you know, this output here uh, of the button is, is uh, pulled to ground through this resistor normally. Uh, but then when we push the button, it connects it to our, our five volt supply here. And so push the button, it comes on. And so we can manually pulse the clock like that. And you might think, well, that, that works pretty, pretty well. And that's almost true. And in fact, you might be able to use this and you might be fine with it, uh, depending on the button that you have. Uh, what happens is inside that button, when you push it, there are two metal contacts that come together to close the circuit. And sometimes what'll happen when you push the button is those contacts will bounce. Uh, and so it'll, it'll close and then bounce and then close again. Or maybe it'll bounce a couple times. And so what happens is when you push that button, you actually get a couple quick pulses and if that's hooked up to you know, the clock of our computer and we push that button, we could actually trigger a couple clock pulses uh, when we only meant to trigger one. And that could be really frustrating if you've got you know, some issue that you're trying to debug in the computer and you've, you've spent a couple minutes getting it all set up just perfectly and you're, you're right at that point where the next clock pulse is where you're gonna figure out what's wrong with it. And you push this button to get a clock pulse and you get three clock pulses and it goes right past the problem you're trying to find. That, that could be really frustrating. So what we want to do is we want to figure out a way to get rid of that, the, the, that or, or you know, avoid that bouncing. And uh, you guessed it, we can do that with our friend, the triple five timer. But first I hooked up the oscilloscope just to take a look at the, the switch here. And so when we push the switch, you can see this is what we'd expect, right? It, it transitions from off to on. Uh, but if we try this a few times, we might see some different stuff. Oh, there's something. Yeah, look at that. So that, that definitely bounced uh, right there. Uh, and so that's, that's not good. You don't, you don't want that. Uh, because that would, you know, that would look like one, two, three potentially clock pulses when you've only pushed the button once. So you definitely want to get rid of that. And so this now is a triple five circuit that is going to help us with this, uh, with this switch bouncing problem. And so, well, I mean, before we get into it, let's just try it out. Let's push the button and see what happens. Push the button the light comes on, and then a little while later, the light turns off. Um, and importantly, what happens if we push the button multiple times, the light only comes on once, and that's what we want. And this is called a debouncing circuit, and there's, you know, there's a lot of other ways to build debouncing circuits, but uh, you know, I'm using the triple five timer just because I think it's a fun chip to play with. And so the timer here that's controlling how long this uh, stays on when you push the button is controlled by the, the resistor and capacitor over here. And so, you know, you remember before we had uh, two resistors and a capacitor that were controlling the, the pulsing. Uh, here we just have one resistor and a capacitor and we'll go into more about how it works. But basically the time that the LED stays on is just, you know, you pretty much multiply the value of the resistor times the value of the capacitor. And so this is a, a one mega ohm resistor and this is a, well, it's a two microfarad capacitor. It says one MFD on it, but uh, I don't, apparently these are two microfarads. Uh, but anyway, the nice thing about, about this is uh, one mega ohm is uh, 10 to the sixth and microfarads are 10 to the minus six. So the math works out really easily here so that a, a two microfarad capacitor, when you multiply it together, you just get two. Uh, and so that gives us a two second delay. And sure enough, we push the button and the LED stays on for two seconds, which I guess is further confirmation that this one MFD capacitor is really two microfarads. Uh, anyway, uh, so, you know, two seconds is kind of long for what we want. So what we could do is we could put in a, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor instead of this uh, two microfarad capacitor. And uh, if we stick that 0.1 microfarad capacitor in there, that's gonna give us 0.1 seconds because we're multiplying it by this one mega ohm resistor. So now it stays on for 0.1 seconds. No matter how quickly I push it, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but that's what we want. I mean, we want it to pretty much follow what we're doing when we push the button, uh, but we cr critically are getting rid of those bounces. And so as long as any bounces that happen within the first, uh, you know, 100 uh, milliseconds or 0.1 seconds, uh, 
we, we've gotten rid of. And that's what we want. And so I understand how this works. Let's look again at our circuit diagram. And I've got the triple the five timer here, the, the guts of it <laughs> exposed here. But the, the green bits out here are, are, our, are our circuit. And of course, we have an LED hooked here, the output I didn't draw. But, um, and of course, we're just looking at this, this lower half here. Is, you know, this is what we built in the last video. And so we've got our resistor here, which is our uh, one, one meg ohm resistor. And we have our capacitor, which is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And then, you know, over here, I've got the, the, the button hooked up. And if you look at how this is hooked up, uh, the, the button is connected between ground and pin two. And then it's also uh, from pin two, you can see we've got a, a 1K uh, pull-up resistor. Basically what that does is it ensures that pin two is normally connected to five volts. But then when we push the button, it connects it to ground and then uh, pin two goes to zero volts. So just like before, we've got this voltage divider uh, network going on in, inside the, the triple five timer. And so we're, we've got five volts up here. And then we've got 3.3 uh, volts here at this first point. And then we've got 1.667 uh, volts here at the second point. And then of course ground is at zero volts. And so that's just a voltage divider, resistor voltage divider. We've got one third of our voltage, two thirds of our voltage, and then up here is our, our full voltage. And so, so we can see right now, you know, our output is off. You know, the LED is off. So if our output is off, then, you know, that must mean, you know, that the Q output of this SR latch is off. And so the inverted Q output must be on. And so if that's on, then that's going to be, uh, you know, putting current into the base of this transistor. And so this transistor will switch on and we'll be discharging or, or we'll be, you know, we'll be uh, pulling current through this transistor. And so, you know, in this, in this state right now, current is flowing, you know, from our voltage source through the transistor to ground. Uh, and if this capacitor had any charge on it, that would also be, you know, uh, discharging uh, to ground. And so this capacitor doesn't have any charge on it. And so our threshold is at zero. And of course, zero is not above 3.3. Uh, and so this is going to be off. Um, and then this down here is five volts, right? So it's, you know, trigger pin two is five volts. And five volts is not, not below 1.6 volts. So this is also off. So both of our S and our R inputs into our SR latch are off right now. And so somehow this latch is just latched into the state where it's off. But what happens when we push the button? When we push the button, we now pull this trigger low. We pull this to zero volts. And so zero volts is, you know, is definitely below 1.6 volts. And so this comparator here turns on and that triggers the set uh, of our SR latch. And so that turns the output on. And so sure enough, you know, we push the button, the output comes on. So no surprise there. But the other thing that happens is when that output comes on, uh, this turns off. And so we're no longer, you know, pulling current through this transistor here. And we're no longer discharging this capacitor. So instead, we're charging the capacitor. And we're charging the capacitor through this resistor. And so this capacitor is going to charge. Uh, it's going to start to charge. And eventually, you know, it's going to get above 3.3 volts. And so when the capacitor charges to above 3.3 volts, now the, uh, the reset is going to be triggered. This, this comparator is going to turn on. It's going to trigger the reset. And that's going to turn off our output. And it's going to uh, turn on our, our inverted output here, our inver you know, inverse Q. And that's going to, you know, push us back into this state where we're now discharging the capacitor. And, and now there's no, there's no resistor between this capacitor. Remember in the circuit before we had another resistor in here, but there's no resistor here. So this capacitor is going to discharge, you know, immediately. And so it's just going to, you know, drop right back down to zero volts, um, which of course is going to immediately turn off this, uh, this comparator, right? Because zero volts is, is certainly not going to be above 3.3. And so this comparator is going to turn off and we're not going to be triggering this reset anymore. But if we're not pushing the button, you know, we're not triggering our set anymore either. And so the latch is just going to stay in its latch state and our, and our output will be off. You know, so if we're looking at what our, what our output did, as soon as we, you know, as soon as we, as we hit this trigger, our output comes on, right? Because we set the, the latch 
and then it stays on while the capacitor charges up. But then once the capacitor gets to the 3.3 volts, boom, our output goes off and it just stays off. And it stays off until we, until we hit that trigger again, we, until we push the button again. And so you might hear this referred to as a monostable mode of the triple five timer, uh, because it's called monostable because there's one state where it's stable, and then if you push this button, it goes into this other state where it's not stable, where it's gonna, you know, eventually this capacitor will charge and then it'll drop out of that state. Uh, whereas the, <clears throat> you know, what we did in the last video with this, this is called an A-stable multivibrator or A-stable mode for the triple five because it doesn't have a stable state. It's, you know, constantly altering between two states on and off. So you might hear those terms, uh, monostable and A-stable. So to take a look at that in action, I've, I've hooked it up to the scope here. And I've also gone in, ahead and put the, uh, that two microfarad capacitor in there again, just so we get that nice slow two second uh, uh, pulse there. So if we uh, fire up the oscilloscope here, push the button, you can see the output goes immediately high and then you can watch the capacitor charge and then boom, as soon as it hits that 3.3 volts. So let's see, one, two, three point, Three, yeah, 3.3 volts, capacitor gets there and boom. It just, that discharge pin flips and the capacitor just instantly discharges. And then of course our output turns off then. And so you can see any bouncing that the switch is doing in here, doesn't matter, our output's already high. We've got that latch that's, uh, that la that's latched it high. And then, you know, as, as long as this capacitor will just charge away and then boom, turns off. So I've got that 0.1 microfarad capacitor back in there with our one meg resistor. I think that's what I'm gonna go with. And uh, yeah, just like before, we've got that, uh, that control voltage pin, which is uh, pin five here that we're not using, and that's just kind of tied into here. And uh, again, the data sheet recommends putting a point one, uh, point zero 0.01 microfarad capacitor between that and ground. So I'll go ahead and add that in there, and that's just for that noise reduction that we, we saw in the last video. So good practice, put it there. And then the other good practice is pin four. Also not using that, that's a reset pin that kind of ties right into the reset of the SR latch and it's an inverted uh, reset. So uh, normally it should be uh, at five volts and then bringing it to zero volts forces this to reset regardless of what's going on over here. Just kind of override things. Um, so we'll, we'll tie that to uh, five volts there just to prevent that from accidentally tripping or anything like that. And I think that'll, that'll do it. So now we've got our, uh, our timer here. So we've got that and we can adjust the speed. So we saw that in the last video and go really fast or really slow. And if we don't want to use that, we've got a manual clock pulse here. So now we just need to come up with some way to switch between the two of those. And we'll, we'll look at that in the next video.